Dear students, Assalamu alaikum. It is our second lecture on ligand and receptors. In our previous video, which is the first part of this lecture, we discussed ligands, different type of ligands and their classification. And also we discussed different type of neurotransmitters which acts as ligand. Today we will discuss different type of receptors and their classification and their mode of action. So ligands are signaling molecules that binds with the receptors and receptors are the response elements and they carried out response after binding with the ligand and they are based, the binding of the ligand and receptor is based on lock and key principle. Like lock is opened by the key. Similarly, when ligand, which is called as agonist, it will bind with the receptor with proper orientation. Then it will carry out the further response or reaction inside the cell or where it is needed. So we discussed already that what are the ligands and their different uh, types, classification and then types of signaling we also discussed in our previous lecture. So today we will discuss receptors which are the response elements they are actually the proteins which are receptors. They are the uh, class of proteins which acts as a receptor. They function by binding with a specific ligand. After binding of the ligand, the change in conformation occurs which produces response or signal. The signals are transmitted by these receptors and then function different functions or various functions are carried out. They are present inside the cell or outside the cell or maybe the surface of the cell. So different type of receptors are number one cell surface receptors. These receptors are present at the cell surface or we are we can say that these are the membrane bounded proteins. These are G protein coupled receptors, which are known as GPCRs. They are very important inside uh, our body and they perform various functions. We will discuss each type in detail. Transmembrane enzyme link receptors. Enzyme link receptors are of two types. Some are transmembrane and some are cytosolic. Ion channel receptors and cell adhesion proteins. So these are the different type of cell surface receptors. Second one is the intracellular receptors. Intracellular receptors are present inside the cell or we can say that they are present inside the nucleus, nucleoplasm or cytoplasm. These are the nuclear hormone receptors, steroid receptors, inositol triphosphate receptors, IP3, are cytosolic enzyme linked receptors. Now we will discuss each one in detail. The cell surface receptors, there are three important cell surface receptors which are G protein coupled receptors. They are seven member transmembrane proteins which are embedded inside the protein and then they have uh, G, uh, proteins of alpha, beta, GDP2, GTP and then cyclic adenosine monophosphate or guanosine monophosphate. So we will discuss the function of GPCRs in our next slides. The second is the ion channel receptors. When ligand binds with this ion channel receptor, uh, the opening of this ion channel causes these ions to move inside the cell to plasma membrane. And the enzyme linked receptors, they contain an extracellular domain, transmembrane domain, and the intracellular domain. 
so the ligand or agonist binds to the extracellular domain and the function is carried out or the signal is uh, transmitted from the intracellular domain by the modification of the proteins so g protein coupled receptors how they work and the g protein coupled receptors and agonist binds to the g protein coupled receptor well, so the protein which is g alpha beta and gamma is splitted into different units and it makes gtp it converts gdp to gtp and this gtp signals and the secondary messengers or secondary signals are produced which are cyclic adenosine monophosphate cyclic guanosine monophosphate and inositol triphosphate so these are the secondary messengers and they carry out signals inside the cytoplasm or the nucleus and then different functions are performed inside the cell due to uh, response so in this way uh, when ligand binds to this protein the signal is transduced uh, signal is transmitted in the form of cyclic adenosine monophosphate or guanosine monophosphate or ip3 and uh, different type of gpcrs are examples of gpcrs are muscarinic receptor gay receptors beta adrenergic receptor dopamine serotonin receptors so these are the different receptors rg protein coupled receptors and these are the muscarinic receptors are actually where acetylcholine binds opi receptors are those kind of receptors is uh, morphine codeine or opium will bind on these kind of receptors in beta adrenergic receptors adrenaline will bind and in dopamine serotonin receptors the ligand dopamine or serotonin will bind to these kind of receptors so in this way uh, g protein coupled receptors are of different types and each are specific for the specific ligand so on the basis of the binding of the ligands and their type they are uh, they are in different examples and they are different in their uh, morphology here we give an example of epinephrine stimulated cyclic adenosine monophosphate pathway synthesis so here we give an example of epinephrine when in resting state epinephrine is not binded with the uh, beta adrenergic receptor which is g protein So, and uh, the adenyl cyclase, adenyl cyclase is also a, a membrane bounded uh, protein, but it is towards the cytoplasm or intracellular surface of the membrane. And here is the extracellular surface of the membrane. When stimulated state, epinephrine binds with this uh, beta adrenergic receptor, and then beta adrenergic receptor carries out signals to G protein and g protein is dissociated and into two different units which is alpha unit is separated from beta and gamma unit and in this way g protein dissociated this alpha unit will bind with the adenyl cyclase and this adenyl cyclase will convert atp to cyclic adenosine monophosphate this cyclic adenosine monophosphate carry out signal and it increases the heart rate and dilation of skeletal blood blood vessels and so on so these are the secondary messengers which which perform different functions inside the cell ligand gated ion channel receptors these are the examples of ion channel receptors ligand gated ion channel there are different uh, ion channels like voltage gated ion channel and ligand gated ion channel so here we give an example of ligand gated ion channel not voltage gated ion channel so in ligand gated ion channel ligand will bind to the receptor so here is the active site of the receptor where ligand will bind and 
it is also a transmembrane protein with different subunits like alpha gamma so when uh, the messenger or the ligand binds with this ion channel it will open this ion channel and in this way ions will move across the membrane the examples of neurotransmitter uh, examples of ligand gated ion channels are neurotransmitter receptors like here gamma amino butyric acid receptor which is GABA receptors nicotinic cholinergic receptors glutamate receptors and 5 hydroxy 5 hydroxy tryptamine which is 5 HT3 receptor so these are the uh, different ligand gated ion channel receptors So here we give an example of neurotransmitter receptor and neurotransmitter binds uh, with this ion channel which is ligand gated ion channel then the this pathway will be open from this across the membrane so in this way the uh, ligand gated ion channel works enzyme link transmembrane receptor enzyme link transmembrane receptor family tyrosine phosphatase family receptor serine threonine kinase family receptor guanylyl cyclase family so these are the enzyme link transmembrane receptors enzyme linked receptors also works in this way that ligand binding domain is the outside of the cell membrane where ligand will bind and there is an intracellular active enzyme domain which will, which will perform the function intracellular receptors now we will discuss intracellular receptors intracellular receptors are nuclear hormone receptors steroid receptor ultraphosphate receptor Solic enzyme linked receptors. Here, uh, the cytosolic enzyme linked receptor, same type like here, we discuss transmembrane enzyme linked receptors. So, these are of similar uh, enzyme families. So, the cytosolic receptors are also tyrosine kinase family, tyrosine phosphatase family, serine threonine kinase family, and guanylyl cyclase family. So, these are the similar but the, uh, these are transmembrane and the others are present inside the cytoplasm. Now we discuss the other intracellular receptors like nuclear hormone receptors. Nuclear hormone receptors are present inside the nucleus. The examples of nuclear hormone receptors are and peroxisome proliferator receptor. How nuclear hormone receptor works? When hormones like uh, steroid hormones or some other which are hydrophobic in nature, so these act as ligand and they will pass through the cell membrane. And then when they will bind with the receptor, which is an active receptor dimer after binding with the hormone or the ligand before this it was inactive receptor like here it is monomeric now it become dimeric after binding with the hormone and then it will bind with the DNA and transcription activation occurs so now it will act as a transcriptor transcription factor and the mRNA or transcription will start which produces messenger RNA and then messenger RNA will move to the cytoplasm and it will carry out protein synthesis and in this way a protein will be produced. So the signal is, uh, is carried out by this hormone which acts as ligand and after binding with the receptor, receptor will carry out response and it will uh, signal DNA to produce a messenger RNA and then messenger RNA will produce protein and this is the final response of the cell after binding with the hormone so a protein will be synthesized <coughs> steroid receptors 
there are different kind of steroid receptors like glucocorticoid receptors, progesterone receptors and androgen receptors. So these are the examples of steroid receptors. Here we give an example of corticosteroids. They bind with the G-protein coupled receptor. which is intracellular steroid receptor and here corticosteroids will bind and the associated proteins will bind with this one and it will perform uh, it will carry out different functions like transcription of the uh, mRNA and then translation to produce proteins similarly mineralocorticoid receptors so corticosteroids also bind with mineralocorticoid receptors Uh, when it binds with G protein copper receptors, it will carry, uh, it will uh, activate the second messengers and uh, like cyclic adenosine monophosphate, and then the function will be carried out. Drug target receptors. Drug target receptors are actually the uh, drug acts as a ligand, and they will uh, work like antagonist, or it may be antagonist, or the inhibitor of the enzymes. So drug may act as a ligand and it will bind with the receptor. Then in pharmacology, the drug target receptors include ion channels. Ion channels may be voltage gated ion channels or ligand gated ion channels. Enzymes, cytosolic or transmembrane enzymes can be a target for our drug and transporter proteins. So uh, the ligands which are our drugs are the medicine uh, may target ion channels, enzymes or proteins or sometimes DNA or RNA. So the drug target receptors are these kind of proteins or DNA or RNA. Forces involved in ligand receptor interaction. There are different forces which are involved in ligand receptor interaction. When ligand binds with receptor, it Dipole interaction or the electrostatic interaction. So the detail of uh, these different kind of forces which are present between ligand and receptor uh, is present on my YouTube channel in the form of a video. So you can watch this video uh, which is the uh, which is we discuss in detail these type of interactions which are present between ligand and receptor. So here is uh, our video which is intramolecular forces on ligand target in ligand target interaction and it describes uh, all kind of non-covalent interactions. So you may visit this video for detail of these kind of forces which are present between ligand and target. So thanks for watching my video. After this, uh, we will discuss the structure activity relationship and uh, quantitative structure activity relationship in uh, drug designing and drug discovery process. Thanks.